Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Thursday afternoon. Oh, my goodness, this week has flown by. It's uh, Pastor Rob. I guess it's a little late for coffee, but maybe you're a late coffee drinker. So enjoy. And uh, we're back to uh, the book of Mark, Mark chapter 4. I jumped ahead a little bit yesterday during the parable of the sower because I thought it was appropriate to tie in the first few verses with verse 26 about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. So we're going to back up to Mark chapter 4. We're going to begin at verse 21 and, and talk about that. Jesus is again in Capernaum above the lake, uh, out on a boat. He's teaching the crowd uh, from the boat, and which is really cool. Uh, again, I think that's just a, a great setting. Uh, I think everybody would enjoy sit on the, the shoreline and listen to Jesus teach. What a uh, If you could just lose yourself in that imagination, that'd be pretty cool. Just think about that. So Mark chapter 4, verse 21, Jesus is still continuing to teach after the parable of the sower. And he said to them, uh, do you bring, now he's speaking of the word of God. We're sowing the word of God. The seed is the word of God. He's still talking about the word of God. And so as he talks about this in his parable, the lamp refers to the word of God. Also in John 8 or 8 verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light. So it's very important that we consider the word of God and Jesus being the light when he talks about this parable here. He said to them, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Uh, instead, don't you put it on a stand for whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. And so what he's talking about is the word of God. It's it's uh, it's it's not to be concealed. We need to get the word of God out. We need to talk about the word of God for whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. What is hidden? The, the, the mysteries in the word of God, the truths in the word of God, what's being hidden and how's it being hidden? The authorities don't want this word out. They like control. They're trying to actually in, in, in Mark 3 verse 6, remember they were trying to kill Jesus. Do you uh, bring a lamp and put it under a bowl? What do we do? We turn a lamp on. Do we throw a shade over it or and cover it up so we can't see it? No, that's common sense again. Uh, we turn a lamp on so we can see. And Jesus even said the whole world is in darkness. So turn the lamp on. Don't hide the light. We need the light. And we need the light today. In the world today, in 2024, we need the light. We need the word of God. And so it, it gives light into life. It gives us meaning. It gives us depth. It gives us purpose. It tells us where we came from, where we're going. Our, our whole laws across the world are based on biblical principles. Don't steal, don't murder, all those things. That's biblical principles. Because there's a law, there had to be a lawgiver, and that lawgiver is Jesus Christ. It's God. And the laws are good for us. Imagine if there was no law or there was just total lawlessness. Who wants to live like that? I do not. And I don't think most of us do. A lot of pe people say, oh, I could live lawless until it comes to your doorstep. Um, I don't want to get off the sidetrack, but I hear like when I was in the Rangers and I, I worked with Navy SEALs and, and Special Forces guys, I was in that for three years. And you hear a lot of people say in the comfort of their living room in their easy chair watching TV, drinking a beer or having dinner or whatever. Oh, I could have been a Navy SEAL. I could have been an army ranger. Um, well, it's easy to say that when you're in comfort, when you're enjoying the air condition, when you got a nice cooked meal and you're rested. But I can tell you in the first half hour of my RIP class in 1991, we lost 12 guys that thought, and one of them was a, was a college football player. Uh, some of the guys remember that from my class. He was a college football player at Georgia. And he says, I'm going to go smoke this ranger class. Didn't make it through the first day. So, you know, it, it, law, lawlessness is not pleasant. People think they have this fantasy thing would be okay. I can do whatever. Uh, it won't bother me until it happens to you. So laws are good. Anyway, I got sidetracked there. My apologies. But the, the, the word of God is, is the basis for our laws, the basis for the organization of our life and our, the economy, the ecosystem, the things that we live in. God put everything neat and in order and said it was very good and it's for us to enjoy. Let's keep it that way. And so, so let's get the truths out. So keep going. It's not meant to be concealed. The truth is meant to be exposed. The truth is meant to be preached. Just like he said in the parable of sower, sowing the seed. Sow the word. 
Turn on the lights. Let's get the word out about Jesus Christ, the hope we have, where we came from, where we're, what our purpose is, and where we're going after we die. There's no mystery there. We're going to heaven or we're going to hell. And I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. That's just the truth. We have the decision to make where we want to go. Do I want to go to heaven or hell? That's going to be based on whether you believe or don't believe in Jesus Christ. So if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Mark 4, 23. Now, everybody has ears to hear. Everybody needs to hear this word. That's what Jesus is saying. Anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. If any, So God's saying, spread this word globally. Spread this word universally to everybody that has ears to hear. Let them hear. Don't with, withhold the truths found in the word of God. Spread the word of God to those who have ears. Now, obviously, there are some people like my friend Dave who are hearing impaired. They can't hear at all. And we text each other on our phone. That's how we communicate. Pretty cool, actually. But um, thank God for technology for that. But, but this is the point, is that God wants the light on. He wants the truth out. He wants everybody with ears to hear. Because some people are hearing impaired. Just take that. He who has ears to hear. Everybody has ears to hear, but some people don't work. Let's get the message to them, even who can't hear. And let them hear. And what is it? The truth of God. And carefully consider what you hear. In other words, take it in, think about it, meditate on it, um, compare it with what you know about God, his character, his attributes. Is it true? Foster it. Think about it. It's like having the word and not reading it, but read it, study it, understand it. Consider carefully what you hear. So turn on the lamp, spread the word, tell the truth that's hidden. Let everybody who has ears hear the word, hear the truth, the hope we have and the encouragement we have in the word of God. I'm not a monkey. I'm not evolved. I'm not evolving. I am created in the image of my creator, God. And I have a purpose. I have a future. I have hope. I have value because of that. And so consider carefully what you hear. All things that you hear. I said, I think the last message or last study, we need critical thinkers. Don't just take for granted that what you're hearing is true investigate it for yourself speak from your own investigations don't just share the opinions of other people they may be morons and forgive me for that but let's let's be well read well studied well understanding what i believe why i believe it why i'm communicating what i heard from somebody else because i've investigated and found it to be true or i found it to be false but investigate it so consider carefully what you hear, he continued. This is for all things. This isn't just for the Bible. But even when in the Bible, when I'm teaching, and I challenge everybody, go look it up. If I'm wrong, tell me. If I'm off, tell me. That's okay. I don't care. I want the truth. Caref carefully consider what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And even more, whosoever has will be given more, and whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Now, this is kind of confusing. So what this is about is when you have the word of God, are you just listening to it and then walking away from it? Or are you, whoever has, I hear the word of God, I bring it in, I'm listening to it, I'm studying it, I'm investigating it. And as you have that, as you use that, as you investigate, as you meditate, you grow and you get more, it becomes more valuable, it becomes more uh, colorful, it becomes more applicable to your life. If you look at the word of God and go, well, that was a great verse, goodbye. It perishes. And I look at this as like, um, well, when we were police officers, you know, they would say uh, shooting a weapon is a perishable skill. So keep up with your shooting. Keep up with this so you're a good shot and so on and so forth. So you don't hit grandma when you're shooting. And so it's a perishable skill. Now, if I took that and I went and qualified and then I went on the road for 10 years and then shot my gun, I might not be, probably would not be as good as if I had practiced at least once a week for those 10 years. It's a perishable skill. Like your voice, you have a talent, you can sing. What good is having a voice that you don't sing with? Go out and sing if God gave you a voice. Go make your voice stronger. Go get voice lessons so you can magnify. You, you have something you've been given, and that he who has been given will have more by investing in that talent that you have, investing in whatever that ability is you have. It could be gymnastics. It could be something academic. It could be... It could be anything, obviously, that you have been given a gift. If you've been given a gift, if you go to school and go to one class or one semester, what did you really learn? Go take four years. Go take six years and develop your skills. Develop your mind. 
uh, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, you know, way back when. But literally, uh, exercise your mind. Uh, get, get, use your brain, use your head, use your thinking skills. Anyway, things are perishable. Muscles, if you, if you go to the gym and you want to bench 300 pounds, but you only work out once a year, that's no good. You got to work out four or five times a week. You got to eat right. You got to, you know, 90% of working out is, is diet, actually. Believe it or not, it, it's eating good food and becoming a successful athletic individual. You've got to work the muscle. You've got to have, if you use it or lose it, basically. So whoever has will be given more. And that is taking care of what you have, using it or losing it. That's what this verse is about. So that's uh, Mark 4, 25. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. So basically, if you don't have the ability or the, the will or the desire to exercise your muscle, it'll wither, you'll get weak, etc., etc. Same with the Word of God. If you don't exercise the Word of God, when you, people ask you questions, you can't answer them because you haven't investigated the Word of God. So let's, let's get be skillful studiers and students of God's Word. So verse 26, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. And we talked about this with the parable of the sower. A man scatters seed, the word of God. The man is the, the man or woman who may be a Christian spreading this seed. It could be man or woman on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. We have an idea of how seeds grow. But why does an acorn bring an oak tree? Why does an apple seed bring an apple tree and not a pear tree? We don't understand it all. Because God programmed it that way. Yes, it's faith. And yes, uh, people say, oh, faith is weakness. Well, I didn't build the car I drive. I don't build the house I live in. I have the faith that the people that built and did both of those things did it well enough that I can dwell in my house and drive my car safely. The food, I mean, you could go on and on. Food and everything, go on and on. So anyway, um, so you scatter the seed, you water the seed. When you sleep, we don't know how it sprouts, but we know this. God says... If you plant it, it'll sprout because I said so. And I promise in uh, Galatians 6, 9, uh, uh, if, we, if we sow and we work and we labor eventually in due time, in God's timing, we will reap a harvest. And so we will reap a result. And so night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Sometimes we don't know how the word of God grows or how it's going to affect certain people. I have, I reached a man one time named, named Gene. Gene was an atheist, hated God. Chris was a six foot nine, was an atheist, hated God, didn't want anything to do with God. You know what? We became friends. And he came to church one Sunday and I was preaching. And while I was preaching, he stood up in the middle of service and says, Rob, I can't fight it anymore. Can I give my life to Christ? An atheist. I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know how that happened. I only know I was faithful to the word. His wife was faithful to the church. And Chris came because we became friends. And he heard the word of God. I don't know how it happened, but he stood up. And six foot nine, getting him in the baptism was not easy. He was a big dude. And we got him baptized. And he is serving God to this day. And this was like six years ago. So we don't know how it's going to sprout. We only know that if we do it, God promises there will be growth. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, the head, then the full kernel. And then the head, as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Remember I said we will plant the seed. We will water the seed. God gives the increase in his time. And then when we see the opportunity, we have the privilege of participating in the harvest that the word brings. Uh, when the word brings results, that is, we get the privilege of praying with somebody through to Jesus Christ. We get the privilege of praying with my friend Shana when she gave up drugs and she came to church. She sat in the parking lot for two years and we put, and I made sure we could get the, the, the message to her through the car radio from the church and she got to listen to it. And two years she walked into the church in the front door and her mom came in and we knew she had issues and she came in and I'm like, what, you know, they came in during a church service and I knew right then I'm like, she wants to be baptized. And I remember looking at her mom and she was like, yeah, she does. And she's the first time she ever came in for two years. She never came into church, but she listened faithfully to the word of God. And we preached the word of God faithfully. And Shana gave her life to Christ that day. She got baptized. And let me tell you something. I still don't. That was six, eight years ago, too. She's a prayer warrior. All the stuff she's been through, through drugs and other things. She's a prayer warrior. She's going to school. She's getting an education. 
You never know what God can do in, in his faithfulness to the word that we spread. But the privilege of baptizing her, that was probably the most emotional moment I ever had in ministry. So verse 30, again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed. The word's just a little thing, but the word has a purpose. It's genetically and chemically and miraculously designed to do something. And then a mustard seed is a small seed, if you've ever seen one. It's, they're really hard to see. They're very small. It's the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants. Not the largest of all trees and all that, but the largest of garden plants. And becomes uh, with such big branches that even the birds of the air can perch in it. I mean, even a little acorn becomes a giant oak tree, right? So, I mean, just you just never know. Your faithfulness to the Word of God is so valuable. And we don't always know what's going to happen. We don't always know the results. All God is asking you to do and me to do is to be faithful with the use of the Word of God. Study it. Learn it. Exercise that spiritual muscle. Develop it. And, be, and when you have, you will have more. Let your light shine. Let your light shine before all men. Man, we need light in this world, don't we? The world's crazy. The world's divided. We can be... You can be an influencer for Jesus Christ to bring people together and love one another. It's crazy what we're doing out here today. So with many similar parables, Jesus spoke. He spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. You know, you get wore out about a half hour. You've had enough or whatever. You know, it's tough to keep people's attention for longer than a half hour, 35 minutes maybe. He did not say anything to them without using parables. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Why speak in parables? Because you got to think about it. Let's look at these parables. What do they mean? What does the sower mean? What does the seed mean? What's the thorny ground? What's the stone? It makes you think. That's what God's saying. Hey, man, I've got the truth. I've got the light. I need to use it. I need to turn it on. I need to think about it. I need to apply it to my life. I need to hone my skills as a, as a believer in Christ, just like you would at anything you do. If you're a doctor, uh, you want to be a great doctor, so you hone your skills. If you're a nurse, you hone your skills as a nurse to be a great nurse. Maybe your patient interaction as a police officer. And God, we need good police officers out there. And yes, somebody asked me, do we need police reform? I'm not saying we need police reform, but I can tell you as a police officer formerly that we do need some guys that could use a little bit of extra training. Just skills with people would be nice. Verbal Judo is a great um, book that was written to, to, to use. Be kind to people. I watch cops escalate at situations over and over when we're supposed to come into a situation, use our head, and calm people down. Bring things to a resolution without always having to get physical. And I, I love police. I, I support police everywhere. Man, sometimes we do admit that I will admit that there are some hotheads on the street, and we don't need that. Guys, chill out. Come in, be the authority, be, serve and protect your community. Now, obviously, some cities are tough. I worked in Baltimore City. It's a tough city. You really got to keep your head on a swivel because you just don't know. But as, a, as, and I know I'm getting off a little bit, but literally hone our skills as police officers to be better police officers, to be better soldiers so that people see us and that we can restore that respect that we once had as police and as pastors. There used to be a time when people were like, okay, pastor, what do you think? That doesn't happen very often anymore. We don't, but we've lost that position as pastor to be influencers in our community, and that needs to come back. Our positions of former authority need to come back, and there needs to be character. There needs to be respect and honor both ways when it comes to doing those jobs so we can restore those offices in the order that we need in our country today. And that's only going to happen through the Word of God, through humility, which we lack today. Humility before the Word of God saying, God, we need help. And that's the truth. America, we need help. I, Rob, I need help every day. You know, uh, but with my family, being smart, dealing with unprecedented times that we're in after 9-11. Things have changed a lot. You guys all know that. But if you want to know the truth that's been consistent through time, that's consistent from cover to cover, it's the Bible. It's the Word of God. And it's written for our benefit. We need to know it. We need to sow it. And we need to grow it. So, Anyway, I hope you all have a great day. We'll uh, try to get together tomorrow, Mark 4, beginning at verse 35. See you later.